MYF show. I'm joined by the always awesome, always smiling, always gorgeous. <laughs> Pastor Jim. <Jeff. laughs> and I'm Kevin Kilonzi, aka Kev the Rev. Welcome to the MYF uh, service show, whatever you want it to call it. Uh, all you know is that this is the Afro Urban Your Gosh for Worship experience. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Uh, we've been going through a sermon series called Christianity 101. And it's been so epic. In it, we've been trying to look at. So when we started the first week, it was Easter Sunday, yep. and we were just. Our very awesome pastor here took us through um, the Easter message and how it's relevant to us today. And then last week, I took over and I was talking about what it means for God to still be a loving God despite the suffering. Mm. Guys, that was a hard conversation. But you brought it home. I personally actually took it and I felt some, you know, it was so relevant for me, uh, even in a day like today. And so today we want to continue with us that same vein and want to be looking at uh, why is it just so hard to do the right thing? I know you can feel me. Uh, every time you want to do the right thing and you just find it yourself, why am I, why, have you been ever been in such a situation? You want to do the right thing, but then you keep choosing the wrong thing. <laughs> so it's interesting. Um, I think I'm one of those people, I got saved uh, when I was in high school. I was 17 at the oh, time. Oh, come on now. Jesus just spoke your name into yeah, existence. So there was a burning bush deep, on your birthday. There's, there's nothing deep about this. So I remember still, I have said I am a Christian. I'm following Jesus. But there are days when I tell my mom, you know what? I'm going for a sleepover at my mm. best friend's house. Mm. And I was there at some point in the day. <laughs> <laughs> but we had other plans and then now something happens your car gets spoiled on the other side of Nairobi and you're just like now who do you even call how will you explain to your mother that you're supposed to be on this side of Nairobi you're on the other side mm. but guys okay to applaud like it's so hard to say no so many times it didn't end well but you know Jesus is still Lord yeah. but I don't know that's just me maybe you, you are born a pastor <laughs> ah, you know just speak for yourself I mean <laughs> Me, I know I've sinned. Me, I know I, I, I've tried to want to do the right things. I know I've promised my wife to do a couple of things and I find myself not doing it. I've promised my son, I'm that old, uh, to do a couple of things, find myself not doing it. I've even promised myself not to, to, to lose my weight, uh, but I keep picking it. In fact, I watch my weight grow. That's, that's how hard my life has I'm been. I'm with you there. I'm with you there. <laughs> <laughs> and so as you go through this series today, Jim, is there hope for you and I? Okay, is there hope for you? That's a legit <laughs> question. That's a legit question. And uh, allow me to just read scripture for us today because it's easy for us to, you know, decide that this is our struggle and be okay with it. Yeah. But that's not where uh, God calls us to. So allow me to read scripture. And our scripture today is coming from John chapter 14, uh, verse 15 to 19. And here's what it says. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. So this is Jesus speaking to his disciples, and this is just um, before he gets crucified and, you know, has to leave them. Um, verse 17 says, The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor does, he, nor does it know him. Mm. But you know him, and he lives with you, and later will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. Wow. Such such um, encouraging words from, from Jesus. And I think the beauty about Christianity is that we get to live a life where we know we have the, the full arsenal of heaven are available for us, available to help us go through our daily life, to allow available to help us to be able to learn to choose the right and wrong. And and Jesus, that's the beauty of Easter. Jesus says, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna resurrect, and when I go to heaven, I'm not leaving you as orphans. I'm sending you another help, another counselor. Counseling means, you know, I'm gonna someone who's able to speak, teach, to remind, to walk with you practically mm -hmm. uh, through different seasons, uh, an ever-present help uh, in times of need. Um, and 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 I think that's the, I, I'm excited to, to be aware of such a message. But this is not just a, a story. I think uh, the, the promises are promises when they are delivered. I think we we're talking about something like that. Yeah. So it's very easy for people to make promises. Boy, child, you mm. lie to us every day. <laughs> you make promises and we know this, but it's another thing when you deliver on your promise. Mm. And so Jesus would have just told them, you know what, I won't leave you alone. I'll bring a helper and you'll be okay. I won't leave you as often. 
Ben after he goes, you know, that could have been the end, yeah. but he actually delivers on he this. He delivers on his promise. So, one of the people that I find so fascinating in the Bible is Simon Peter. Mm. Simon Peter was that action guy. He made promises to Jesus. You know, I will die for you. <laughs> Everybody will leave you. Me, I'm here with you to stay. Yeah. Then Jesus gets Cruz, uh, really arrested, arrested yeah. and life gets real. Mm. And Simon Peter is like, Jesus who? Jesus where? When? <laughs> who, 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 who? I don't know that guy. I've never heard of him. Me, I'm just, I mean, I'm hearing this story with you. Yeah. And he, he takes off. But then this same Peter in the book of Acts chapter 2, we see a very different person. He's addressing a crowd of people he doesn't know. Boldness. And, and he's declaring, oh. he's just like, this Jesus that mm. you guys crucified. And he gets arrested for it. And when you read, of course, when you finish his story, he actually ends up being crucified for this Christ. He had a boldness to stand on what he believed was true. Exactly. Something has changed. Something had shifted yeah. uh, in that. And that's what we're looking at today. Uh, and I think, and and, and we're, we're looking at the person of the Holy Spirit. And we're saying the person of the Holy Spirit because many times we think that the Holy Spirit is a that's force. Fair. Have you ever been in those churches where you are you are hearing today is the Holy Spirit what? impartation service? You are like, yes. hey, I'm all going. Because yeah, first of all, people start falling, <laughs> yeah, people, people fall, are screaming, people are just like, ah, uh-huh, okay. And so you are like, uh, that's story of the Holy Spirit. Me, I'm okay. Right. But I think the Holy Spirit is much more different than that. Uh, the Bible uh, invites us to have a relationship uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, in fact, the picture of the Holy Spirit in Scripture is not a screeching hawk. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not a uh, uh, you know like uh, you know whatever peacock. It's actually a dove, a gentle dove. That's the person of the Holy Spirit. is gentle. He's he he's able to uh, relate both to a young person but an old person uh, as well. And so we see the Bible uh, inviting us into three different or showing us three different types of relationships that anyone can have with the Holy Spirit. And so the first relationship is actually found, the first two actually found uh, where you just read in the book of Acts chapter, um, uh, no, sorry, in the book of John. Uh, uh, maybe you can read the, uh, John 14 verse 17. Maybe you can read that verse again for us. Uh, the first two relationships that you can have with the Holy Spirit because he's to be related with. That's the whole deal. Mm-hmm. So it says, he is the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. who leads you in all truth. The world cannot receive him because it's not looking for him and neither can it recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you and later will be in you. Oh, I love that. He lives, he's, he's with you and later will be in you. I think those are the first two relationships that you can have with the Holy Spirit. The first one, he is with you, the with relationship. And then later on, he will be in you the in uh, relationship. What does it mean for him to be with you? You see, by this time, Jesus had not died. Uh, by John 14, Jesus has not died. So he, he could not be able, the Holy Spirit could not be able to come into the into the disciples. And so he says, he's with you. Just the same way he's with anyone who's not yet received Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's job there is to pull at the strings of their heart, is to reel them in, is to tell them this Jesus is dependable, this Jesus is a real deal, accept him today into your life. Uh, 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 you know, just open up your life and say, Jesus, come in. And when you do that, he moves from just being with you to convict you, to he gets to in you to allow you or to walk with you to live your, your salvation life. Now, when did the Holy Spirit come? into the disciples i want us to read from john uh john again john chapter 20 verse 21 and 22 an amazing story basically what happens is the disciples by this time jesus died he's resurrected the disciples are afraid they're in what we call the upper room they're locked in the door they're so afraid of what will happen and then boom jesus shows up and then verse 20 uh chapter acts uh, i mean john chapter 20 verse 21 and 22 says this so it says again he said peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. Then he breathed on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. That's it. The Holy Spirit moved from just being with them to being in them. And that's the deal. The, the, uh, when you accept the Holy Spirit to come in you, now you are born again. And the Bible says that you've been given a measure of the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of things to come. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit in you bears witness that you're a child of God. The, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit uh, is what identifies you as a child of God, helps you to walk your salvation journey. But th- there's not just with or in, there's another level of relating with the Holy Spirit, which is called upon relationship. That's why Jesus says, hey, I know the Holy Spirit is in you, but here's what you're going to do. Chill in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. 
when but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to jerusalem to, to judea samaria and to the ends of the world exactly the that level of relating with the holy spirit the upon uh, uh, um relationships help you to to actually live out your your god given purpose helps you uh, the holy spirit comes upon you to help you to be a witness to do the work of ministry to go and evangelize to go and be a witness with your fellow students and other kids in the in the estate helps you to be bold enough to be able to uh, present Christ uh, to people he helps you to be able to live out your god given purpose that's the whole deal mm-hmm. but remember it's not you know it's not about you living your life on hey, am i in am i am i with am i you know am i upon that's mm-hmm. that's not the deal he is a gentle uh, a dove mm-hmm. and so the bible uh, tells us this uh, in the book of uh, Luke chapter i think 11 verse 13 could you read for us So basically it's just talking about God and mm. how the Holy Spirit is a gift available to everyone and it mm. says look 11:13 so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him imagine and so it's not for you to wonder okay how will he come how mm. what, do i need to do need anything to be perfect for him now to come exactly then have to earn it. The, the holy spirit is not a, is not is not a, a reward for good behavior mm-hmm. he's not a present because you you know you've done some things now you are you are getting a present yeah. the bible has said he's a gift. gift all you need to do to get a gift in your life is to accept it mm-hmm. and so the bible jesus uh, tells talk to the disciples and says uh, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will the heavenly father give the holy spirit mm-hmm. to those who ask and so the mm-hmm. idea whether you want to know you know is he, in my life can here come upon my life the bible says just ask yeah. you basically go to a loving father and say heavenly father thank you mm-hmm. i know the holy spirit is available for me why because jesus promised him and so today i want to ask that to come into my life yeah. and right there and then boom the bible says the old is gone the new has come you are now a child of god to all those who believed in his name to all those who accepted him he gave the power or the right to become, to become the children of god, god. But not just that wow. he gives you capacity he gives you empowerment mm. to be revealed to the entire world and so today there are people their children their classmates of yours who are struggling and they're truly just waiting for you to be revealed mm. as a son of god and i guess it's a good wow. day for us to be able to say man mm. i want to move a little bit deeper with the holy spirit yeah, yeah. I, i want just, to i just don't want him to be with me oh come on even in me i want him to be upon me like there's impact there there's, there are people out there waiting for this thing let me tell you you know there are times i cook eh? mm. even now and then i cook one of the dishes i could cook is a um, chicken uh enchilada and so and so i really don't know what it means but anyway what, what, what happens is you ma- you make this gravy um uh <laughs> soup <laughs> you make this gravy and then and then you know you put all the curries and everything and then you take chicken and throw it in now at that point if you remove the chicken mm-hmm. it still has a gravy on top but the gravy is not in okay. the chicken mm-hmm. this is deep eh? this is deep it's this is it's just making me hungry so <laughs> you, you you draw in the chicken but as they continue having that relationship in the pot mm-hmm. at some point the chicken and the stew are one mm. you take the chicken you remove it it's the stew it's is inside the, the sweet there. brown juice of pure gooey goodness is inside the okay, chicken you're making me happy. <laughs> i know i know <laughs> what am i saying uh, uh, the holy spirit is in you the question is are you in him mm. That's why we go to their pond where we say oh god just fill me up. Yeah. Fill me I, I, I often get empty. I often get um get into spaces that just move me away from your presence but I'm praying for an infilling mm-hmm. uh, uh, where the holy spirit is upon me uh, enabling me to walk my salvation journey. Mm-hmm. Wow. This is a legit conversation and I know that the question we started with is why is it so hard to do right and wrong? Mm-hmm. And what we are hearing from what Pastor Kilonzi is saying is that Our job is not to be perfect. God mm. does not expect perfection. He expects submission. Oh, come on. So our job is to show up and allow him to give us his spirit who walks with us. So first he's around us convicting us of the things that we need to deal mm. with. Then he's in us changing us from the inside out, mm. allowing us to live a better a better life. And then he's upon us allowing us to have impact in this world. Mm. 
well me i don't know but me me i feel blessed by what it is you've said so as he said it's it's a gift the holy spirit is a gift mm. it's not something that you have to work for it's something that you just ask and god can give mm. so as we get into this time of reflection guys invite the holy spirit it's not complicated i know many of you will find yourselves in a space where you're just like i need to clean up my act first and then i can come talk to god that's his job but that's the job of the holy spirit mm. he's the one who helps you clean up your act he's mm. the one who helps you do the right thing he's the one who takes you to this new level with god a level of intimacy and relationship so as we get into this reflection just take time and then ask god to fill you up with the spirit consuming fire You're my heart's desire Oh, how I need you more A fresh outpour With no resistance I give permission Come now invade my heart This life is yours Come fill me up, Holy Ghost Shine bright into the whole world Know your love Your love Come set me on a holy fire Burn bright into the whole world Find your love Your love Holy Ghost, shine bright into 
the whole world knows your love. Your love. Come set me on a holy fire. Burn bright until the whole world finds your love. Your love. Oh, yeah. Come fill me a holy God. Shine bright until the whole world knows your love. Your love. On a holy fire, burn bright until the whole world finds your love, your love. It's your love, your love, your love, your love. Your love, your love, it's what I'm looking for. Your love, your love, your love, it's what I'm looking for. welcome you today you've been given to us as a gift to lead us into our truths and just because we are young Lord doesn't mean we can receive your Holy Spirit despite of what people say at a young age at a tender age we are open to be led by you so that you can guide us into all truth. There's so many things that are being talked about in this world, so many lies that we don't know what's true anymore. But as, as your word says that it's the Holy Spirit that helps us, that guides us into all truth. And even as we dig deep into your word, Lord, your Holy Spirit would help us interpret the word, the scripture, who give us revelations on what we have to do in our youth so father god we invite the holy spirit in our lives we accept the holy spirit right now may you fill us up may you consume it may you consume us with your consuming fire burn whatever is not of you god and lead us in truth and in spirit in the name of jesus christ i pray Wow, guys, I, I hope that the music has has impacted you. It's spoken to you. And this is a relationship, guys. It's not a one-off. So I pray that you will keep asking God to fill you up with His Spirit and that you'd be willing to move to the next level. Don't just be content with, now I'm a Christian, but move to the next level, the level of impact, the level of changing the world because that's what we are called to. Mm. So allow me to just pray for you guys. Mm. Father, thank you so much for everybody who's watching us today. I pray that this message would find um, a space in their hearts, that Lord, they'd want to move from where they are and just seek you deeper, have a deeper relationship with you, that those ones who are at the point of not having committed themselves to you, that they'd be willing to commit, that the Holy Spirit would live in them. And those ones who have committed and have just been content with you being in them, that they would want to for you to come upon them in mm. power, in authority, that they'd be able to go out and make a difference in this world. Mm. So I pray that everybody who's watching right now, that your spirit would continue to reveal himself to you, that you'd continue to teach us your truth, to guide us in everything that we do, and that ultimately, Lord, you'd be glorified in everything. So we give you glory, we give you honor, and we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you so much. If you want to be part of our iGroups, our interactive groups that meet during the week, 
uh, kindly follow this link and we'll be able to plug you in you also want uh, anyone to pray for you kindly dm us and we'll be able to do that just for you thank you all see you next sunday bye To the whole world, finds your love, your love. Come fill me up, Holy Ghost. Shine right into the whole world, knows your love, your love, love. Come set me on a holy fire, burn right into the whole world.